There's a little game that's as easy as can be With numbers and letters and lots of chemistry It comes from quantum theory and wave mechanics stuff But for now just learn the game and that will be enough Oh, one is two, two is two, then comes two P6. The electron configuration game is really slick. From alkali to halogen and ions and noble gas. Now you can understand the periodic law at last. Well, atoms have orbitals where electrons like to play. And those electrons fill the orbitals in a special way. It's a building up process. You can learn it in a second. And you can call it Aufbau. Deutsch is what you sprecken. All right, the electron configuration polka by Mike Offit. That may give you a hint what we're going to do here today. I started out by showing you a CD. This happens to be a CD with some spectral images on it. And if you look at a CD, it has many, many lines. It's actually can act like a diffraction grating. And it breaks up light. light of, white light has all the colors in there. Roy G. Biv, some of you know. And this breaks it up, and you could see some of the colors. Such, such a scratching or lines on here is called a diffraction grating. I think it was 1802 that Thomas Young explained how a diffraction grating works. Each color of light has a certain wavelength or frequency. When light hits these grooves at a particular frequency, the colors are reinforced. It's broken up, or the light is broken up by various wavelengths. By moving your head on the CD or diffraction grating, you could see colors of different wavelengths. Atoms of a particular element, when excited by an electric arc, can also be, give off colored light. Atoms jump from a lower state to a higher state when they're excited by an electric charge. And then when they fall back down, they give off light of a particular wavelength. And you know, come to think of it, if you excited me with an electric charge, I may jump to a higher state and fall back down to the ground state quite easily. Excited atoms soon return to the ground state, and when they do that, they give off light. Now, since atoms have diff each particular atom has a different number of protons, they have different numbers of neutrons, different numbers of electrons, they have different orbital configurations, um, different electron arrangements, you will get a whole series of different colors unique to each particular atom that you're looking at. It's kind of like a barcode or um, an ID for the atom. You can look at that. Let's take a look at some over here. Okay. Here we have visible light, the full spectrum. And of course, there's things on the other side. There's uh, ultraviolet. Now, if you can see in that range, let me know. There's infrared. And we're going to look at the colored spectrum for the particular elements and we're going to see a series of lines, something like this. And each one is unique. So you see, it is sort of like a barcode, isn't it? Now, in order to break those up for you, we are going to use these diffraction glasses. Now, it turns out when I was a kid, I first experienced this and never realized it. I'm reading my classic comic books, getting ready to do my book report. <laughs> those of you in the younger generation don't get that. And in the back, there was an advertisement for the X-ray viewer. You were supposed to be able to hold your hand up and see your bones. I'm going, I want one of those puppies. So I sent in my two bucks or whatever it was back then, you know, 30 cents, but that was worth two bucks nowadays. And I'm looking at this going, well, that's bogus. All I see is a bunch of colored lines and uh, there's no bones in there. I was hoping for other things, but... It turns out this is a diffraction grating. And then I found out they no longer sell these, except that one place bought the last 10,000, which I immediately purchased all of them and used them in my classroom because they were dirt cheap. So they're all gone now. I've given them away to the kids. Nowadays, you can purchase these. These are diffraction gratings. There's about 13,500 lines scratched in here. And you can use these to look at the... Um, you could see the spectral lines for the atoms when you, dis when you use it in this discharge tube for various gases. Now, students will like to rip these off and steal them from you, so my suggestion to save money is cut them in half. 
No kid wants to walk around with a monocle. So if you cut it in half, they won't steal it. They're forced to look at it even more closely because one eye is closed. Now, what I, what I would have my students do is the following. Since we're going to see a series of lines, I give them a sheet of paper, and it has the different elements on there, and it has over the top Roy G. Biv for the colors. Okay, and you, you may have heard of that. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And they're supposed to take their... Uh, pens, if they have colored pens, pencils, or crayons, or you can keep a box of crayons in your room. Um, have the students make, co copy the uh, spectral lines in those diagrams that you made. Let me just show you what I mean. You're going to make a box like this, but it's going to be blank. And they would fill in the lines that they see. They need to be in class, obviously, to do that. So I have a series of all the elements that I'm going to do. They copy it down. They're supposed to keep this with them. I say, you need to keep this with you. This is going to be with this like your notebook. You have to recall it. A week later, I give it to them again. But they get to use their sheet of paper. And if they can't interpret it, that's their problem. <laughs> OK, so that's a, a nice authentic assessment. So enough of me droning on about this. Let's take a look at some of the emission spectrum. Let's start out with uh, one of the elements that started out the whole thing, hydrogen. So I'm going to have you dim the light slightly here so that we can see this. And then we're going to futz around with the camera to see if you folks at home in the privacy of your own computer screen can see these. Let me put mine on, too. And by the way, if you own these, these are fabulous with fireworks. Now, since this is, I don't know, something like 10,000 volts, we're, we're going to be subjecting. This is hydrogen gas, by the way. This is what started it all. People wanted to try to explain the spectrum for hydrogen gas. I'm going to turn this on. Now, I don't want to get near these parts when I turn it on, because I don't want to see my spectra. That's not a good thing. And in, by the way, in Europe, the voltage is 220. and That's even worse. I know. I've, I've done it to myself over there. All right, here we go. Get the lights down. I'm going to step on the other side. You don't. There's, ooh, there they are. You see three lines there. All right, so what you saw was the lines for hydrogen. You should have seen, let's see, we have some hydrogen here. You should have seen a, maybe three, four lines. Some of these are rather dim, but with the glasses, you can see at least three, perhaps four lines for hydrogen. If some of you can see in the ultraviolet range, you may see some more. So we, scientists tried to explain this for a while. Okay, what do those lines mean? This was a, there was much debate about what those lines meant. All right, let me put another element in there. This is uh, neon. You've all seen neon signs, and this is what most students think of when they think of neon the signs and windows. This is the particular element that most signs used to be made of. So let's dim the lights on that. OK, so this was neon gas. Uh, I'd also have the students look at white light, too, from an incandescent light bulb, not a fluorescent bulb. So I would look at that and have them look at, if you have an overhead projector, if you have sunlight, don't have them look directly at the sun. That's not a good thing. Have them look at sunlight maybe coming through the window or an incandescent bulb. All right, this one is helium. This element was actually discovered on the sun before it was discovered on the earth. So it was named after the Greek god Helios. Oh, a nice set of lines there. OK, so here we see the element again, helium, named after the Greek god Helios. You get a nice set of lines there. Well, let me take that out. Let me put in mercury. If you look at fluorescent lights, especially in the old days, you could see, again, white light. But in, because they had a small amount of mercury, they still do, but even smaller amounts, um, you would see the mercury lines showing up brighter over the continuous spectrum. So let me shut this, turn this puppy on.
Okay, so here we see mercury in it. And again, even the uh, environmentally friendly bulbs now still have small amounts of mercury in it, and that is something to worry about because we don't want that to get out into the environment. And finally, we have argon. There's a number of gases you can get, but these are the ones I chose to use today. So this one contains argon gas. So the argon is rather faint for the camera, but this is your lucky day. I happen to br brought my sign from home. I have one right here, this puppy. I'm going to see if you can't guess what element it is. Those of you in the audience here. The camera might have had a little hard time with this, but we're, this contains a gas. One of the gases, in fact, that I used. So I'm going to turn this on. I put this in the front of my house so that people can find it at night or even during the day. There it is. Let's get the lights down. Let's take a look at it. Look at it with the diffraction grating. What do you see? A series of moles. <laughs> I know. You're going, this is a guy with too much time on his hands. <laughs> we see the color spectrum for, and this happens to be, and the kids are supposed to guess which element it is. This is, and it's argon. So this contains argon gas. You'll see that nice series of colors. This is a mole. I leave it in my front house when new people are coming over to find it because they can easily, it's the house with the mole. So I have this on at night sometimes. So I had a, a teacher at my school was a member of the Naperville City Council. And they liked to pass ordinances. They had a cat leash ordinance. In order to have your cat outside, you had to have it on a leash. Now there you go. Herding cats. That, you know, that does not work. They passed an ordinance that said no neon signs in your windows because they didn't want people advertising in their houses. So, okay, so I have this in my window, and he sees this. He's walking his dog by my house. He teaches social studies. He doesn't get science too well. Sometimes he has a problem with it, and he doesn't always understand issues. He is kind of a off-the-wall guy. So he comes in and rings my doorbell. You know, we've passed an ordinance that says no neon signs. I go, okay. Well, are you going to shut that off? No. Why? I said, it contains argon gas. Here, take a look at the spectral lines of this. <laughs> and he goes, I don't get it. I said, well, tell you what. In my high school book, on these pages, you go home, read about it, learn it, and then you'll see that I did not violate your ordinance. <laughs> and they haven't come back or bothered me since, uh, which is good. That's a good thing. Now, there's another thing you can do with this. Um, this is a device you can get from Flynn. I taught him how to make these things. They're aluminum wire, basically. And you hook these into a light bulb. And then you can take a Tesla coil. Okay? And this is a Tesla coil. It's equivalent to rubbing your feet across the rug for 5,000 miles and then touching your cat or doorknob. So if you could uh, focus in on this, you'll see a little arcing going on. So that's maybe 40, 50,000 volts just to get an arc that distance. Were you able to get it? Should I go again? No. Okay. No, I even smell a little ozone. So maybe you've seen those plasma devices that they have in the uh, stores. They work with something like this to ionize the gas. So we've got an incandescent light bulb here, and it has a certain gas in there. And there's a tungsten filament. There's a lot you could say about chemistry and physics in here. We've got it attached to the Tesla coil. So your job is to keep your fingers on there and don't let go. If you let go, then it'll arc to you, and it won't be nearly as pleasant. And you'll be a, an extinguished educator. Actually, there's no chance of death. Okay? So... Here we go. We're going to get the lights down. I'm going to crank this puppy up. And uh, usually I have him stand in a bucket of water. No, I don't do, that. don't do that. Okay, can we get the lights down? And the gas that happens to be in there, and you could guess from looking at the spectral lines or looking at the color here, it's argon gas. They put an inert gas in there to help keep the filament from breaking down. 
they put a small amount of argon gas in each of these incandescent light bulbs. And folks, if you're going to do this, you better hurry up and buy some of these. They're going to be antiques in a few years, I have a feeling. Now, the color you see on these spectral um, tubes here is the composite of all the colors mixed together. But when you put the glasses on, it breaks it up into the various wavelengths or frequencies of light. Okay. Um, I think that is it. So, in summary, we've taken a look at the spectral lines, which are a fingerprint or an ID for each particular element. And you're able to look at these with these diffraction glasses. And in a week, I'd like you to bring that lab data back, and I'm going to give you one of these elements as an unknown, and you will have to identify it based upon your information that you've copied down.